All right, so I decided to split things up because it really isn't applicable if you're using a unique deck versus a standard deck of cards. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and comment out the standard deck of cards stuff, and then I'm going to keep the unique deck of cards stuff. Now, this code that I use here, we really don't need that because we're not using a standard deck of cards, so I'm just going to make that disappear. And... Um, for our card class up here, we've got a test card, we've got a deck, and then of course we have an index. That stuff can stay. So if you're just watching this video and you skipped the last one, uh, what we have so far for our unique deck of cards is attack, defense, we have an attribute, and then um, that's about it. If you wanted to add more stuff, you totally could. The idea here is how would you create all of these unique cards? Because it's not like a standard deck of cards where everything is sequential and where you could just create this this mathematical formula that calculates the next card. In this case, we have a bunch of unique classes and they need to be entered manually. These are design choices you would make for your game. You're gonna create some kind of card, give it a certain attack value, defense value. You might even give it a public string name or a public string description. What you're gonna to need to do for each card is you're gonna to have to enter these in like kind of one by one. And it might seem a little bit tedious, but um, once you do it, then it's done and you can access all that information later. So we have a deck of cards. And um, it might even be better to just rename this. So I'm just going to comment that out. And I'll make a new one for the unique cards. I'll call this public card array. Let's call this um, collection or possible cards. Okay, we'll call it something like that. So I'm going to call it collection for right now. And then in the start function, you may want to, let's say, build collection. We haven't created that function yet, so we're going to go ahead and move down under the start function and create a new void. So public void build collection. Just spell it the same way. You can verify that you did everything correctly by looking up here, and if there are no errors, that means you spelled it just fine. So in this build collection, what we want to do is we want to create a bunch of card classes. Now you need to know how many cards there are. So we're going to say uh, collection equals new card class, and you have to give it a number, let's say 1000. Okay, so that's how many unique cards we have in our game. It's totally a lot of cards. But uh, you know what? We're going big. We got a thousand cards. Now we need to fill up this array. So it's going to be a lot of lines of code, as you can imagine. But um, it's very easy to do. The first thing we want to do is set up our basic card. We need to set an attack, a defense, a name, a description, an attribute, and that's about it. Those five things. So we're going to go collection zero. And then instead of just saying equals, um, we would want to change each individual property, right? Like attack, etc. Best way to do this is just like before, we're going to create a loop. Okay. No, you know what? We'll do this one by one. We'll say card temp equals new card. Start with that. And then we'll say temp.attack equals, let's say it's for the first card, it's, it's attack is one. Temp.defense equals zero. This card is super weak. Like if you've ever played a card game, one, zero, those values are so low. Temp.name equals fresh new. Wow, what a card. When you put a string, you got to put it in quotes. You can put spaces if you want. Make those both capital. We want to make it um, look nice. We've got temp dot attribute. Remember the attribute we made a variable att for attribute equals, and it's going to be a card dot attribute type. And you can put another period and then choose the attribute. Let's make this. This is a noob. Noob is air type. Air is weak. Air is not going to beat anyone else. And temp.description equals meh, just like that. Okay, 
next thing we're going to do collection zero because zero is the first part of the collection equals temp all right we've got a card you want to copy this make two spaces so that there's a line in between and then paste it now uh, actually I went a little bit too far I'm going to copy up to here don't copy the temp part two spaces and then paste it so we'll reuse this card temp that we created a thousand times and we'll create every one of our cards so at this point what you can do is you can just replace all of the values so you can replace the attack the defense don't forget to double click it's uh, pretty helpful you can click and hold but um, this method is very easy to use. You could do control F and then let's say I search for zero. Okay. Or um, once I get to like three where it'd be unique, you know, if, if that was a three, I could recopy it and then paste it. Oops, two spaces, paste it. And then now I've got a unique value here. I could just search for three. And then every time three pops up, I could just change the next value. It doesn't want to agree with me, but um, basically what I would do is I would search for three, it'll highlight it, and then if you click the down arrow here, you can then change that to, let's say, a four, or, um, okay, so change it, and then it'll take me to the next value. So the reason why that's useful is, let's say I just wanted to copy a bunch of these. So I'll click copy. Uh, actually, I want to start from here, right? Copy, paste, paste again. See how it's got the line in between? So I just keep doing this. So I've got a bunch of the identical, you know, collection for cards. And so I'm at like line 300 already. I didn't really type anything, but it just took me all the way over there. What I could do to make this a little bit faster is I could then um, click just in front of that next four, control F, look for four, and then replace that with five. Next, replace with six. Next, replace with seven. Next, replace with eight. And it'll just help me fill this in if I don't want to keep clicking. Um, that's one option. You could also write this by a script. Uh, you could totally do that. Just make sure that your script has a correct formatting um, in place. And then you would then copy and paste it into here. So if you don't know what I'm talking about to write this by script, don't worry about it. It's a little bit complex. Uh, maybe I'll do that in another video. But for right now, basically, this is it. you got to brute force it if you're making unique cards. Um, it takes time, but it's totally worth it. You can make a card game that's a lot of fun. One thing I do recommend, though, before you spend all of your time, I don't want to say waste your time, but before you spend all of your time brute forcing a full database of cards, try and play test a little bit, if possible. Um, make some paper cards, do it in real life, because that will save you time in the long run. All right, we're hitting eight minutes. That's a pretty long time to spend on this video. Uh, good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.